Hello, and welcome to an open source live code hangout. Today, we're gonna to work on the Jerry Life project, and I'm gonna try to see if I can fix a strange bug I found yesterday. It's a floating point rounding bug. Might be a good challenge to tackle with the help of ChatGPT. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't find the mute in time. We're on the server, got my ectoplasm here on the server, load it up, and we'll take a look at this list of homes here. And what we'll notice is we have 14 plus 14, 28, 71. So this should be 72. I'm not really great with math and numbers, but I'm pretty sure those are not matching. So otherwise we're getting pretty far along here. We're doing pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is um, find the source where these are calculated. Now what's happening is they're actually really long floating point numbers. And I rounded them in the template. And when I rounded them in the template using float format, it basically truncates. I'm not even sure. It may, it may round, I don't know how it works internally, but it rounds to like one decimal place or zero in this case. And so it just takes the next one and rounds up or down, but uh, it's not quite working correctly. So I'll locate the code. It generates the data for this chart, and the chart's used in a couple of places. It's coming from the home. Now, one thing I might do is migrate this away from the home, but I've got a home model here, and the function, there's a few nested functions here for sort of it, um, but here's the top level function. Right, so resident counts by activity level, and this is where we are. So what we do is get a list of the home residents, or I think it's a query set, and each of those residents has a count of the number of activities they've participate in, participated in in the last seven days. And we're going to create a counting dictionary, and there's maybe a better way of doing this, but we have some weekly activity ranges, and if it falls into that range of each of those, we'll iterate. And then if we had a count, a total count, for that resident. Oh, after going through all the residents, that is, I'm sorry to say. Uh, then we're gonna look at the total count. So this is where we're not normalizing or to, to ensure that it is, they sum up to 100%. I believe if I abstract this into a separate, yes, yeah, another helper function that takes a uh, data frame, it has a total count column and it pins it. Because there's gonna be some logic here. resident counts by activity level and what we'll actually want is the resident percents by activity, activity level in the case of this chart and I don't know if normalize is the right word here but normalized means everything is scaled between one and zero but uh, that means they're also that they're they should sum to, to one I think we're operating at the uh, this is where if I extract these two functions it'll be better because I can annotate this signature If I look at this chart, I need to make sure, because now I'm refactoring it. Instead of having a list of each of the activity type with the formatting, I have a dictionary. So I'll have to, I would have to change the structure of the template, and I'd prefer not to do that. So this won't quite work. So let's go ahead. So we get the activity counts by resident acti counts by activity level. Uh, but you see, this is still not quite doing it. So that's fine. Now we have that. I believe I need to sum to one. Let's see what it says. GPT four. To ensure that the percentages sum up to 100, you can normalize the calculated percentages so their total equals 100. This involves dividing each percentage by the total of all calculated percentages 
and then multiplying by 100. Here's how you can modify. Calculate the raw percentages as you're doing. Sum these raw percentages. Divide each raw percentage by the sum and multiply by 100 to get the normalized percentages. Interesting. Let's try it out. So it's like scaling it and rescaling it. And then what I'm going to do, oh boy, indentation error. That's something that always gets me. There's got to be a way I can paste and the tool knows that I'm pasting something that's indented and indents the second line. But now we're going to use this instead on the home detail page. And then hopefully we can just refresh and it'll work. Oh. All right, all right. Uh, this could be any number of things. So first, I should test it probably. In a shell environment. So I could say from home.models. Home.models. Yeah. Import home. Home one is like. equals uh, to We're using internal ID to make it easy and we've got this UUID there makes it more URL friendly and a bit obscure and then we get that ah uh, okay I don't think this is gonna work but uh, huh uh, okay so the function works let's check the DOM real quick so we have some little here's the bar container and it has nothing in it so now, uh, I didn't read it very closely, so it's kind of silly to expect it to just arbitrarily. Hmm. Okay. So then the other thing was, I'm actually using this help of the chart data. So that's all I need to change. I need to locate this because the chart data is slightly different. Here we are different shape, it's um, key values, localizing it. Okay, so oh, here I just need to pull these in. And this is already here, so I don't need to reevaluate that. Uh, but I do need to say total count. Yeah. So if it's zero, we'll return. So now, we're, now we should have something. It's taking a bit, method's not subscriptable. Okay, right, so. Let's just going to do that. Run it, evaluate it. Since I didn't use it properly, I'm a bit inconsistent there. Everything else is a property, but I'm on the cusp. Here we go. 14. 14. 71. It's not as easy. You know, it's not that big of a bug, but. Uh, I, I forgot to mention. So I like to round them to integer percents. I don't need the point percent. It does make so much sense. It's not important information. Rounding each percentage to the nearest integer while ensuring they sum up to 100 can be a bit tricky due to the rounding errors that may occur. Yeah. Common approaches to handle this is to use a uh, method that adjusts the rounding of the percentages so that their sum is 100, remains 100. Here's a revised version of your function to achieve this. Calculate the raw percentages as floating point numbers. Round these percentages to the nearest integer, keeping track of the total. If the total sum of the rounded percentages is not 100, adjust the percentages with the largest fractional parts until the sum is correct. Interesting. Man, that's why I split it down to a separate function, because I figured it was going to be complicated. Is there a Python library that does this for us? <laughs> we have NumPy, we've got, uh, but yeah, it's going around only a single digit. We need the whole thing. And it's basically the same thing. So I don't know if it's perhaps more efficient or legible. Slightly less code um, because mostly it's vectorized perhaps. And explanatory variables will sort of like say what we're trying to do there. Difference too big, difference too small, something like that. Aha, uh -huh. so should increment, should decrement, that's what I was thinking of. You know, it's comparing to size, but it was it's a bit terse, I guess. 
It's pretty dang good. Wow. So we need to import NumPy. I like the NumPy solution. Uh, as far as I know, we're going to keep it around because it's um, we have pandas and we're using pandas for some of our um, visualizations, aggregations it is, I mean. Then we need to fix the indentation and import NumPy as NP. Hopefully things will sort of work out of the box there. I saw some wiggling. 15, 14, 71. Wow. Now, it would be nice to start annotating these with it and um, whether or not it's a query set and things like that. Uh, or a data frame and keeping things as a query set as long as possible because I believe even passing it into functions the Django ORM can still optimize them So wow that worked 78 we actually need to commit something Synchronize those changes, then maybe it'll let us open a pull request. I didn't mean to hit that button before. Okay, now we're gonna work on some unit tests. This is an important feature, it's a subtle one, but there's some layers that we're doing here, so make sure it works. Now one fundamental thing is, before I get too far down the road here, how much do I want these to be model methods versus just functions? How close is the relationship to the home and where are they going to be used? We've got several model property methods. On the home model. And here I'm using a combination of, well this is all data frames at this point. Here I'm only pivoting in the function. Okay, so home resident counts back activity level shouldn't include the percentages. Or is it because these are, no, it's perhaps just the order. A bit flaky. All right, so good active count is the first in our list, but total count is the first in the other list. All right, so I think this is just what I need to do. <clears throat> There's got to be a way to make this list brittle. Total count two, total count two, good active count, and active count. Low active count. Might have to run it in debug mode. Assuming good active count and then high active count. And it should be 50 50. Oh man. Inactive percent. It's really hard to see the differing values here. Let's run it in debug mode. Yeah, I might have to, in any case, rewrite these tests. Huh. The resident counts by activity level. Oh, I see totally what I'm doing. Isn't there? Yeah, it shouldn't it shouldn't return the percents. That's correct. Right, I moved that out. Okay, so so easy. That's clear now. Yeah, good. Plus, oh, it's just literally pointing to me. Me the right thing. There we go. Okay, perfect. Much better. More testable. Let's just run everything. Now we're gonna do the same thing. At least we have confidence that this. 
I don't know if this should be a property, but th this function works. Just a name. This also includes the counts. actually pretty good. It would, however, it would uh, change if I had a third resident. I think I should do this. Now, I don't know if this is deterministic. <laughs> if you have 33, 33, 33, how does it determine hmm. which one to round up? I suppose as long as they sum to 100, not sure if it matters. We'll commit this, uh, that way I don't get too far ahead of myself before making a change. But I'm gonna make a change to the, um, the setup, which is gonna essentially break the tests. And I'll add a current resident high active. Well, let's see, we have, we have an inactive and we have a low active. So first I need to grab all instances of this. Make sure everything passes. the constant value from the activity thresholds so we're kind of coupling this in case we decide to refactor or change the rules of how we calculate the active hopefully it'll be a little bit more robust to that so then I need to <clears throat> create a residency several resident activities for that residency. Current resident inactive, current resident low active. Yeah, no, I was correct. Now, Uh, 
Let's see if that even works. Main inclusive. So we're just going to create another number of activities here. So this will stop right before. Uh, man. All right. Max inclusive. Well, whatever. Yeah. So that's going to cause our um, our tests to break. So first, I'm going to test the mock data line seventy three. So we should have four residencies. And then how many is that going to run total to? So I don't know if this is going to be brittle. Yeah, these names are not deterministic, so... Alice, Pauline, Bob, A, P, B. So Bob should not be first, but Bob is second. A, B, P. I believe this is the order that they will come out. Oh, we got two Bobs. Barbara. Let's see, where's Bob? Alice and Barbara. So there's that. Alice, call them by their first name in the variable name and it'll be less confusing okay less failures less failures now we've got some moderate success moderate everything in moderate including moderation as the saying goes <laughs> so now here's the interesting thing i guess the first one's always going to be the worst one it's a pessimistic model. 33 and 33. I need to assert that they all sum up to 100. Let's see if that works there. Good. It did. This one is three active uh, residents run one and one mm -hmm. knocking him down oh boy so this was first that then that then 34 three 33 this is I'm a bit worried about that and one more though her current residence is four. Wow. That's, that's good. No one can no improve the tests. Oh no. Synchronizing. Synchronizing. Reload. And this is just time we it failed in the last run. There is a bit of cognitive complexity. New results being calculated. Alright. Cool with that.
Test coverage 100% on this diff, that's good. It's going to improve a test coverage by half a percent. Not bad, almost 80%. We're really close, really close to 80%. I need to do a more systematic um, approach, uh, basically looking through this test coverage, tackling it. Uh, I suspect a lot of it is these methods are untested or at least indirectly tested. But I'm not going to do that in this pull request. Ah, it looks like we're good to go. So now when I, when I go back here, home, so 57 plus 43. Yeah, if I do the arithmetic. That one we checked. 13. Oh, I don't want to do the arithmetic on the live stream. Oh, wait a minute. 13 plus 50 is 63. Is there a 1%? trying to think here if there's a way I can just make this simpler hmm so it works in like you know the three uh, oh wait a minute that could have been an old refresh let me just double check here <laughs> please go back to the homes page i think that was a cached version of the page 57 yes so we check this one no 15 uh, 29 Good, we're good. Wow, well, I'm getting units to to prove it. All right, this has been another live code hangout. We've been working on the. I forgot to link this in the beginning. We've been working on the Jerry Life caregiving project. If you'd like to check out this project, it's open source on GitHub. Oh yeah, and it's down here at the bottom there, over here, right there. Boom. The whole time it's been there, so I don't have to do that as much. But there's the. Um, project in the chat and here is the pull request I've been working on it's where it's at <clears throat> see the exact changes that we introduced here you know a little bit over 100 lines of code not bad overall so it's been a great uh, experience I think the copilot as you can see has really um, and chat GPT in particular which I think copilot is powered by chat GPT nonetheless uh, really transformative in the way uh, I'm working and giving a lot more confidence to doing fairly complicated things including writing and fixing unit tests which is kind of tedious at times but even like ensuring that percentage values always sum up to the to 100 percent you know that's a non-trivial thing some people out there have figured it out um, i don't necessarily have the math skills or background and it's error prone so i would prefer if a library actually handled it for me but with that without that that we get some help and then of course write the unit tests to ensure that um, it's behaving as we're expecting that but that was a, that was a pretty sophisticated yet uh, yeah sophisticated method it wrote function including using numpy and writing clean code by using explanatory variables all right this has been another live code open source hangout i hope you're doing well and have a great day